countdown. <laughs> Good morning. It is time for the word of God. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful morning. We thank you for being a God who never fails, who never ceases to amaze us. Lord, as we open this worship service, Lord, we pray that you, your Holy Spirit would just indwell each and every person who watches it, whether they're on live now or whether they watch it later. Let your same power be in them. Yes. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see you all. And if you are joining us on Facebook, thank you for joining us. If you're here now, please hit that share button and share the message so that we can get to as many people as possible. Amen. 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 This morning, we're going to be talking about something that we all need. Pastor, I said, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, so we all need. It's something, it's something easy, but something that's sometimes so hard to ask for. As we live our lives in a struggle, in a daily struggle, having to make decisions about various things, and age is no factor. Children, as well as some adults, struggle with decisions about homework. Do I do my homework? Or do I take the zero and the consequences that go with it? Do I go to college right after high school or wait until the planets align and everything is just right? Do I go to the military because people say, you know, it's good for you and you'll get training. What they don't tell you is the military is a war fighting organization that can separate you from your family for days, weeks, or months at a time. And those months can add up to years. Mm -hmm. Dinner. Do I cook at home or do I eat out? And if I cook at home, what do I cook? Work. Do I stay on the job I'm on even though I hate it? Or do I leave and try to find another one in here lately? Uh, do I stay on unemployment because I can make more on unemployment than I can if I get a job? Which leads us into our finances. How? Do I manage my finances? Do I operate from a budget or just wing it? Am I going to tithe or just give what I want or decide what I can afford to give? You know, God will understand. Uh, do I buy a new car or a used car or do I continue taking the bus? Do I buy a house or rent? Uh, am I going to wait to have sex until I'm married or am I going to try it before I buy it? Um, do I even want to get married or stay single? And if I do marry, there is an endless pool of decisions you have to make within that union, union with children. Do I want children? If so, how many? And how will they be raised? And how will they be disciplined? Um, do I sign a DNR or ask for heroic life-saving measures and costly life support if I'm severely injured? Do I prepare a living will or leave it to someone else to make that decision if I become incapacitated? Uh, these are just a few of the decisions we deal with, some on a daily basis, some occasionally, and some once in a lifetime. Some of them would appear to be easy choices unless you're the one having to make them every day. Well. For example, what to fix for dinner? To you, it may seem easy, but really, what really goes into making dinner? Well, if you were trained anything like I was growing up, a good, and by good, I mean healthy dinner consisted of a meat, a starch, and a vegetable. It includes different textures, and it has a variety of colors so that it looks pleasing to the eye. Now, for the one who is sitting down to eat the dinner, these things may never have crossed their mind. But for the cook... It can be exhausting. Amen. An exhausting daily 
exercise and sometimes the best our tired bodies and brains can come up with is hamburgers and french fries well, or hot dogs and pork and beans. Ain't nothing wrong with it. With some Kool-Aid. Well. Anybody ever been there? Not the only one. <laughs> then we have the really tough decisions like do I sign a DNR or a do not resuscitate order and have I created a living will so my family doesn't have to make this all important decision for me at what is undoubtedly going to be a very emotional time for them. This is something we don't typically think about, let alone talk about. Mm -hmm. But it's important. Yeah. We can get so super spiritual sometimes that we make things hard for our loved ones, whether it's emotionally, financially, or both. Yes, we need to pray about it, but stop saying when it's my time, nothing you do will keep me here, or if the Lord wants me to stay here, he'll heal me. Yes, he can certainly do that. He has all power. But there are some things we need to discuss with our loved ones because when it comes to death, we can sometimes get irrational. Amen? Amen. You ever seen someone that has been in a car accident and the doctor says that they're brain dead, there's no function in their brain, but, you know, you can hook them up to a machine that will breathe for them, that will pump their heart, and they can... But that body can keep functioning for a long time, but the thing that makes us who we are is gone. And people don't want to turn off the machine because we don't want to lose our loved one, but they may be in unbearable pain. They may have come to a place where their quality of life has declined so much that they get depressed and now have to deal with the mental on top of the physical things going on. But because we love and will miss them, we don't want to let them go. So we try to do things to extend their lives. But saints, can I tell you something? Come on now. We have to pray about it. Well. We have to let go and let God mm -hmm. do what God does. We must recognize that he knows all, but not only that, he also knows what's best. Amen. If you don't have a living will and you are of legal age, you need to get one so your family will know what you want. And if you don't at best have life insurance, at a minimum, have burial insurance. Please, please, please get some. Don't leave your family struggling, scraping and scrimping and go fund me trying to bury you. Decisions. We all have to make them from the youngest to the oldest. We can get overwhelmed with having to make decisions. Some of our decisions not only affect our lives, but they can affect the lives of others. We talked about that in Sunday school this morning. From the extreme, the disgruntled person who walks into a workplace, school, massage establishment, restaurant, supermarket, or church and shoots a bunch of people, then kills themselves, or not, to the person who chooses to drink and drive and kills a family. Mm to the bully on the playground, to the internet trolls. The decisions we make can have a lasting effect on the lives of others. Mm -hmm. You matter, and what you do matters. Amen. With all this decision making we have to do, we can get pretty stressed about it. We can get overwhelmed. So, how many would like some help with the decisions you have to make? Help me, Lord Jesus. Say help. Help. Say it again. Hell. Now say it like you mean it. Hell. <laughs> now, in our message today, we're going to look at two champions of the Bible. We're going to look at King David mm -hmm. and the Apostle Paul. All right. In the Old Testament, we're going to look at uh, Psalm 5, verses 1 through 3. And then we're going to flip into the New Testament. We're going to go to Philippians, verses, uh, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Psalm 5, 1 through 3 in the New Living Translation says, O Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Mm -hmm. Listen to my cry for help. Yes. My King and my God, for I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. Yes. Now, flip over to Philippians, chapter 4, verse 7. 
Paul says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The New Living says it this way, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Mm -hmm. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you, I ask that you touch your servant, Lord. Touch my mouth that I may boldly speak that which you have given me to speak. Mm -hmm. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. The title of today's message is simply, Help. Help. In this Psalm of David's, he is crying out to God to hear him as he prays. He's in distress at a time when, yet again, his enemies are showing malice against him. He knows who he belongs to and where his help comes from, and so he prays. Mm -hmm. We should be no different today. When we're in trouble, when our enemies come against us, when we have decisions to make, we should first remember whose we are, yes. and second, we should know how to call on him. Yes. We should know how to pray. Mm -hmm. And when we pray, we want God to answer, don't we? Yes. Amen. We want him to pay attention to our groanings, our moaning, and sometimes even our whining. When we pray for help, we want and expect that someone is going to answer. We hope God will be there when we cry out. Mm -hmm. In reality, though, we aren't always looking to God. Well. Sometimes we're looking for somebody. Mm -hmm anybody to help us. When you get overwhelmed, do you ever feel like you have no one to turn to? I would venture to say we've all been there at some point in our lives. Mm -hmm. There are times when we feel lost and disconnected. We feel like no one could ever understand what we're going through and King David was no different. In this psalm, David begins pleading for God to hear him as he prays, Oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Yes, yes. David wanted to make sure God was listening as he prayed. Mm -hmm. David was a man after God's own heart, yet even he had times when he pleaded with the Lord to hear his prayer. David goes on to say, pay attention to my groaning. So David didn't want God to just hear him. He wanted him to pay attention. In Sunday school, we talked about a young man that has selective hearing. <laughs> When David is having to deal with his enemies, he doesn't retreat to wallow in self-pity. He talks to God about it. David knows where his help is coming from. So that's the place that he goes to get what he needs. Do you know where to turn when your enemies come against you? When you have to make decisions? When you don't know what to do? David pleads for God to listen to his cry for help and calls him my king and my God. It's important that you know who you're talking to, that you recognize his power, and that you put him in proper, respect, in proper perspective in your life. David says, I pray to no one but you. All too often we ask people for help when we should be going to the one who has all the answers, all the provisions, and knows exactly what you need. All too often we go to God as a last resort when nothing and no one else can help. So when your loved one is laying at heaven's door and you're the one who has to make the call to unplug the machine, do you have a relationship that will allow you to cry out, help, and know that God will answer? You see, Isaiah tells us the problem when we look to man for answers is this. For as high as the heavens, or for as high, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yes. We don't think like God. Mm -mm. 
So it's not that the person you go to will give you bad advice. It's just that, just that their advice may not be the best advice. Okay. When you know that God is your rock, your shelter, and your shield, you know that he's the one you should turn to. Yeah. Not just when times are rough. Mm -hmm. Not just in the midst of the storm. Not just when things aren't going your way. Not just when you have no other options. Well. The time to ask God to listen to your voice is in the morning. Yes. David says each morning, uh -huh. I bring my request to you. Every day, y'all. Every day. Every day. And here is the key. This is what so many miss. David continues saying, and wait expectantly. All right. First, are you talking to God each morning? If you were talking to him each morning, you might have better days. Well. And even when something does happen that wasn't in your plan, you may be able to more quickly recognize that while it wasn't in your plan, it was in God's plan. Yes. And the faster you can recognize God's plan for your life, the less time you'll spend complaining. Well. Then, when you talk to God, are you expecting him to answer? Well. Or do you pray, now wait for him to answer, go on your way and do what you want anyway? What? If you find yourself doing all the talking and none of the listening when you pray, that is failed communication. Mm. But you're praying for help. Help. God patiently waits for us to come to him, mm -hmm. to lay our problems at his feet, yeah. to trust him with every aspect of our lives, not just what we consider the big things. Anybody ever tried to handle a situation on your own because you thought, oh, this is so petty, I got this, and then that little thing turns into a major problem. Now you want to run a God. You're, you're wondering where he's been and why he hasn't helped you. Uh, well, the answer is you thought you had it handled and God will not insert himself into your life without your permission. Uh -huh. It is true that there's nothing too big for God, but what you must understand is there's nothing too small for him either. All right. Pray and expect him to answer. Wait on the Lord. Wait, I say. He said he would perfect that which concerns us. So why wouldn't you trust him? Mm -hmm. God is not a man. He does not lie. He, he changes not. And he loves us with a love that is unexplainable. Mm -hmm. We are rotten to the core. Well. And he loves us anyway. Tasha Cobbs Leonard has a new song called In Spite of Me. Mm. It talks about all the ways we miss the mark. I don't dot every I, I don't cross every T, and it goes on. Uh, but it says, the chorus says, you still love me in spite of me. Mm. You still chose me. Hmm. How can it be? Every scar, every flaw, you see it all, you see it all. And you still love me mm. in spite of me. Well. Now who? wouldn't love a God like that. Come on now. He's not looking for perfection. Just show up with all your mistakes and missteps and misspoken words and he'll take you in. He'll clean you up. He'll dust you off. Yes. He'll give you a new robe. Mm -hmm. He'll give you a new life. Yes. He'll give you a new attitude. Wow. Huh? He'll fix you up. Yeah. Amen. And he'll bless you. Yes, yes. Anybody want a blessing? Just call on him. Help. Wait expectantly, and he will answer. Yeah. There's a scene in the movie, The Best Man Holiday, where Tay Diggs' character is talking to Morris Chestnut's character, and he makes the statement, God listens to you when you pray. <laughs> if you profess Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, don't ever let yourself get to the place where you believe that God doesn't hear you when you pray. Be like David. Meet him in the morning and pray. Then wait expectantly 
for him to answer. Yes. Purpose to be like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Study and meditate on God's word daily so that you can hide it in your heart and be able to draw on it when you get in a bind. Mm -hmm. You can draw on it when you get angry. Uh -huh. You can draw on it when you get sad. Yeah. You can draw on it when you get confused. You can draw on it when you're uncertain about what you should do in any given situation. Yes. Stay at the feet of Jesus. Talk to him in the morning and see, won't he fight you back? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Then you can be like David mm -hmm. in the latter portion of that same chapter of scripture yes. and begin to rejoice and sing praises to God for his protection, for your joy, mm -hmm. and for his blessings. And when your help comes, now we go into our New Testament scripture where Paul tells the Philippian church, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Yes. When you're on Jesus' side, you have reason to rejoice because you know that you win. Go to Revelations. Go to the back of the book and see. We win. Yes. The church at Philippi had a special place in Paul's heart because he was instrumental in planting this church. So it was like one of his babies and he wanted to nurture it and see it grow. So in this book of Philippians, Paul encourages them. He tells them to be aware of false teachers. Uh, he gives them thanks and praise for them. We are, we, Love Christian Center, we're similar to the church at Philippi because we were also born out of a dream. And uh, we, like they, have a very small beginning, but the signs didn't discourage Paul, and neither will we be discouraged. Amen. The Matthew Henry commentary shares this, these words, if good be not done at first, it may be done afterwards, and the last works may be more abundant. In other words, our latter will be greater than the past. Come on now. So don't be discouraged by small beginnings, which we aren't discouraged, but we are like the Philippian church looking to grow into a flourishing church. Amen? Amen. Even as we remain online, you see the church is not the building. It's each and every one of you who are under the sound of my voice. We are the church that Christ is returning for. He has plenty of buildings, buildings not made by man's hands. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That church is you. That's right. Did you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. So don't worry about the building. Mm -hmm. Share the message. Join us on Sunday for Sunday school for the message. Join us on Wednesday for the Bible study and get with us on Thursday mornings for prayer, intercessory prayer each week. Yes. If you're a member of Love Christian Center, continue to send your tithes because the work of the ministry continues. Amen. If you're not currently a member and you'd like to be, I will give you that opportunity soon. Yes. When we look at the letter to the Philippian church, it is unique in that it has no scorns or criticisms in it. And it is the only one of Paul's letter which has that distinction. Mm -hmm. And as we come to the last chapter in the book of Philippians, Paul says to be careful for nothing. That's right. Some translations say be anxious for nothing, but and still others say don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about some things. Everything. Uh, no. All uh, things. Just the really important things. No, no, no. Uh, Come on now. Uh, the things that you can't figure out. Well. It, or, or, no, the things that you can't afford. What? No. You... Paul said to pray about everything. There's nothing so big that God can't handle it, but there's nothing, nothing so small God won't think it unworthy of his time if we ask. Help. Ask God for what you need. For my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Help. Help. But it's important to know the difference between a want and a need. Come on now. And guess what? Sometimes, because he's so good, mm -hmm. he'll even give you some of what you want. Come on. Now, here's where we again can drop the ball sometimes. The same way we don't want to wait and listen for God to answer or speak to us when we pray, there's something else we sometimes forget to do. Paul said to thank him. Thank him. For all he's done. Yes, yes. You have to remember to say thank you. Two small words that mean so much. Yes. It's one of the core manners we teach our children growing up to say please and thank you. So 
if we teach our children to say thank you, uh, don't you think the creator of the universe deserves some thank yous? Come on now. If you got up this morning and put your feet on the floor and your legs held the weight, you should say thank you. Thank you, Lord. If you woke up and you opened your eyes and you saw what was around you, you can say thank you. Thank you. If you got up this morning and you had air conditioning or heat in your house, you said say thank you. Thank you. If you got up this morning and you got a car to drive or you got a way to get transportation, you should say thank you. Thank if you, you got up this morning and you got somebody that cares about you, you to say thank you. Thank if you, you got up this morning and you got through yesterday, okay, and, and you made it to today, you should say thank you. There are thank so you. many things that we need to thank God for. Yes. Just the fact that God sent his one and only son to die to pay the penalty for your sin, for my sin, is enough to thank him all day, every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But we don't. We need to practice living a life of gratitude for the sacrifice Jesus made for us. Yes. He didn't have to do it, no, but he loved us so much. Mm -hmm. He was willing to lay his life down for our sins and for our sakes. Mm -hmm. But here's the best news. When he laid down, he didn't stay there. Come on now. He got up. He got up. Not only did he get up with all power in his hands, not only did he get up with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He got up and he ascended back to the Father where he now sits at the right hand of God interceding on our behalf. He's yes, praying yes. for us. Right now. What better friend to have? What better father to have? Yes. What better way to walk through the perils of life than someone who's been there, done that, yes. and come out on the other side victorious? Yes, Lord. Who better to go to when you need help? Help. When you have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are victorious. Uh -huh. You are an overcomer. Yeah. And you have the peace of God. Mm -hmm. It's not just any old peace. This is a peace that surpasses all understanding. All hell is breaking loose in your life and you're still smiling. Yes. Uh, that's when you truly know that you have the peace of God. You're still smiling. You still have joy. You still say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, when you Lord. ask how you're doing, you're saying, I'm blessed and highly favored. And you truly mean it. It's not just something you say. You have the peace of God in your life. Mm -hmm. When you can smile through your adversity, when you can break through that wall that someone put in front of you to stop you from being who God called you to be, when you can tear down the barrier that was built for the sole purpose of boxing you in, when you can walk in your destiny even when some, someone tells you no, mm. that's when you know you have the peace of God. Yeah. And when you have the peace of God, you have supernatural power. Yeah. And Love Christian Center, when we have the peace of God, we become a supernatural church, yes. composed of supernatural people, doing Come supernatural on. things for the kingdom of God. Come yes. on now. That's a power that even when your heart is breaking, yes. because God's called your loved one home, it allows you to not lose your mind. Oh. It allows you not to fall into a deep despair in which you can't come out. It's a power that keeps you from getting discouraged when the church isn't growing the way that you'd like it to. When you know that some plant, some water, but God provides an increase, but you're just not seeing it, it helps you keep going. Keep it's going. a power that keeps you moving forward when everything in you wants to give up. Yeah. Do you have that power? Yeah. If not, there's no better day than today to get it. Yes, yes. But the only way to get that power is to invite Jesus into your heart. Yes, Lord. You do that by simply praying. Mm -hmm. Lord. Lord. I'm a sinner. Yes. I need your help. Please, yes, Jesus. Lord. Please come into my heart and mm -hmm. be Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins. Thank you. Thank you. For dying for me. Yes, Lord. But I thank you even more for rising up. Yes, yes. Ascending back to the Father where you now pray for me. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer for the first time, congratulations. Yes, yes. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, if you'd like to join the ministry of Love Christian Center, we'd love to invite you into our family. Yes. You can simply reply to this message or send us an email at admin at lovechristianctr.org and we will contact you 
we will pray with you and we will send you some information. For a complete list of our services and the Zoom ID to join us or find out more information about us, see our website at www.lovechristianctr.org. Our goal is to reach the nation for Christ. So please hit that share button on whatever platform you may be watching. Decisions, decisions. We have to make them every day. Yes, Lord. There are times when we all need help. Where will you look to find your help? Are you looking horizontally? Or are you looking vertically? Come on now. I look to the hills from which cometh my help. Help. All my help comes from the Lord. Yes, yes. You want some real help? Some lasting help? Some loving help? Look up. Look up. Look to Jesus, yes. the author and finisher of your faith, yes, Lord. the way maker, mm -hmm. the heart fixer, the mind regulator, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Help. Jesus is our help. Yes. God bless you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We love you. Have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next time. Yes, yes. Good message. Yes, sir.